Uh, my name is Nagisa Oi uh, from Tokyo University of Science in Japan. And today, I'm going to talk about the dependence of agent fraction on redshift and infrared luminosity. And here is a summary of my talk. Uh, the fraction of AGN uh, increase with increasing redshift. On the other hand, uh, the fraction of AGN uh, is, doesn't see the strong uh, increasing with increasing infrared luminosity. This is uh, the summary of my talk. Okay. Okay. So yeah, in this conference, many people already talked about the AGMs. So uh, people probably know why the studying AGN is important. But yes, uh, the studying AGN is important for understanding the star formation history and understanding the galaxy evolution. Uh, here is the, the star formation rate density uh, function of redshift. And we can see that the star formation activity is active at redshift around two. And it comes down from the time to the present. And there, uh, these are the, uh, the mass accretion rate on the supermassive black holes uh, function of, uh, as a function of redshift. And uh, those uh, trends, star formation rate density and mass accretion rate, uh, are very similar as a function of redshift. Uh, the mass accretion rate uh, function is scaled so much to the self formation rate density. So the trends are very similar. So uh, it's kind of natural that we think that those two, self formation rate density uh, and uh, <laughs> no, the, uh, the galaxies and the supermassive black holes are evolving to influence to each other. So if so, uh, understanding AGM is important to understand the galaxy evolution correctly. Okay. And since uh, 19, 19th, 18th or 19th, uh, the dependence of agent fraction against the infrared luminosity uh, has been studied. And in the local universe, many studies say that uh, the frank agent frank fraction increase with increasing infrared luminosity. And also in the redshift uh, up to red, up to 3.5, the similar trends, which means that agent fraction is increasing with increasing infrared luminosity can be seen like this. However, uh, the flux limited uh, samples are always accompanied by a bias that only a bright stars and a bright galaxies, bright uh, sources are detected in a uh, high redshift. So uh, it's kind of hard from the figure to say that this high agent fraction is because of the high infrared luminosity. It might be because of high redshift. So the question is, uh, is the AGN fraction depend on infrared luminosity or redshift? Uh, to resolve the degeneracy of redshift and infrared luminosity, we need a huge data set uh, with a wide range of infrared luminosity and redshift and divided the infrared luminosity and uh, redshift into sub-ranges. Uh, sub then uh, study the fraction of AGN in each sub-ranges. So in this work, we use the Akari NAP wide data with HAC deep optical data plus uh, some other band cutout data set. Here is a summary of HSC data. Uh, actually, this data is introduced by Sonjin yesterday. 
And uh, uh, in this work, in our work, we also cross match between HSC data and Akai NPY data and add the multi band uh, catalogs. But I need to emphasize, uh, stress here that the multi band catalog, multi band data set, Sanjin explained yesterday, what is not the same as the one we used in this work, which means that our uh, the agency data catalog, which uh, we used in this work, was reduced by older version of ATC pipeline. So Sondin's multi band catalog have more uh, ATC sources. Okay, then why uh, in this in this work I uh, we use the older version ATC data ATC catalog? It's just because uh, we started this work before Sonjin started to create the multiband catalog, multiband dataset with a uh, newer version of ATC data, ATC pipeline. And it took a while for this work to be accepted. <laughs> so we sh actually should use the data created by Sonjin, but okay, here, this time, this work, <laughs> Don't be confused that this much band catalog, that much band data sets are not the same as Sanjin's. Okay. Okay. And uh, for our multi band catalog, multi band data sets, we also calculate photometric redshift. And uh, uh, the accuracy of photometric redshift estimation is 0.06 which is not too good, but not too bad. <laughs> and uh, we can see some outliers here. And most of the outliers are type one AGNs, which means that the photometric redshift for type one AGNs are not well estimated. So, and of course, the High accurate photometric redshift estimation is important to study the redshift evolution. So in our paper, we discussed the effect of the accuracy of photometric redshift estimation, which is 0.06, and the impact of type 1 AGN, uh, of which the redshift, a uh, photometric redshift is not estimated well. And we found that the, those effects are not significant to our final results. Okay, then uh, to calculate the fraction of AGN. Oh, this time in this work, the fraction of AGN uh, definition is different from the last talk. So our uh, definition of uh, fraction of AGN is a number ratio of AGN hosts, AGN uh, hosting galaxies uh, over the all galaxies. Okay. And to calculate this, uh, this fraction of AGN in each uh, redshift beans and in each uh, infrared luminosity beans, uh, we start from the 34 uh, empirical SED models like this uh, to uh, cut, uh, divide it, the models, divide it, huh? divide it the models into four categories, uh, quotient, uh, star forming, and type 1 AGN, and type 2 AGNs. Then created a representative SED models for each of the four categories like this. Then we did the stuff uh, SED fitting using the, uh, the four SED models and classified galaxies by adopting the categories of the best fit model. Okay, this is the result of the SED fitting. And uh, we treat the galaxies 
classified as quotient categories or star forming categories as no AGM. And galaxies classified as type 1 AGMs or type 2 AGMs are as AGMs. <laughs> then uh, calculated the fraction of AGM by uh, this formula, this ratio for each uh, redshift and infrared luminosity. Okay. And here is a result of the fraction of AGM depending on redshift and infrared luminosity. And uh, we can see that uh, the fraction of AGM is increasing uh, with increasing redshift regardless of infrared luminosity. Okay. On the other hand, the fraction of AGMs are not uh, increased with increasing infrared luminosity. And these results are kind of different from the previous uh, studies, you know, which is fraction of AGM increase with increasing infrared luminosity. So here I overplotted the previous uh, studies results result on our result. Okay, so like this. So if if uh, we do not divide our sample into uh, some redshift bands, then friction of AGMs looks like uh, depending on infrared luminosity. If a uh, fraction of AGM increase with uh, looks like increase with increasing infrared luminosity, but actually uh, our our studies said that no, this is not because of the infrared luminosity, it's because of the redshift. So uh, this is the result of, of our work. So in fraction of AGM is increasing with increasing redshift, but not increasing with increasing uh, infrared luminosity, okay? So here is a summary of my talk. And yeah, that's all, thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs> okay, we got a question on Slack from Tetsuya. Uh, uh, did you include type one agent template when you calculate photo D? Yes, yes, we included it. Thank you. Um, so, so another question from Tomo. No agent models do not fit well in fine infrared. Maybe infrared luminosity is wrong for them? Infrared luminosity is yeah, if wrong. Agent template is not included then. Can you show the SED fitting? Maybe I'm misunderstanding, but in a quiescent type, there. So the fine infrared part for no AGN is model is not fitted very well. Mm. E ah, yes, yes, yes. Okay. So the classification of galaxies, for the classification of galaxies, uh, we only use optical data, optical to near infrared data. And not oh, okay. okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh, any other question from? Uh, okay. Uh, we can. Uh, okay. Uh, I'm Tetsuya Asimoto from Taiwan. Uh, uh, related to my previous comments, a uh, question. So why are uh, only type one, uh, type one, type one agents are outlier when in, in the plot of photo D versus spec D? Actually, not only type 1 AGN, which means uh, some X-ray detected sources or couple of no AGN galaxies, uh, no AG and sign galaxies are uh, also located in uh, the outlier area. Mm -hmm. But so, yeah. <laughs> you mentioned that many of them, but actually many of outliers are mainly type 1 AGN. So, does this mean that you failed to fit a CD of type 1 AGN using your template? 
So yeah, not only type one is in, but other uh, galaxies, uh, some of the other galaxies are located out areas area, but the fraction of mm -hmm. outliers in each uh, categories, classes are different. And the uh, type one AGN's fraction of uh, uh, outliers for outliers are very high compared yeah. to other classes. So I here I just mentioned type one AGN uh, from okay. redshift is not well estimated. Okay, thank you very much. This is just general comments, but type one AGN has a power low continuum from accretion disk. Mm -hmm. So it's more difficult to fit topology. No for some function break or something. Just general. Ah okay. Even though you include type one is in template, then it's still difficult. Yeah, this is not great. Because no feature. Mm -hmm. Ah, OK, OK. OK, uh, I'm afraid we need to go to the next talk. You have another interesting question on Slack from Miyazi-san, but please go ahead on Slack. So we need to go to the next speaker. So thanks, Nagisa, once again. OK, so next talk 